want it about there, but you'll be able to hear yourself. Okay, okay. Typically, you want it most of the way out. Okay, okay. All right, everybody, welcome. We're at the 2024 Lincoln City Open. Uh, thrown together by the Biggle Box. Uh, I don't know if they get enough credit for doing that. Uh, Carissa does a great job with that. Uh, I don't even know what how many of these they've had, but they've, they've two times a year, they do eight ball and nine ball. Uh, and it's a great event. Uh, I think for, this is eight ball right now. Last time they did nine ball, they had 113 players. I'm making that up. They had over 100 players. I think it was 113, but it was something ridiculous like that. Uh, and she does a hell of a good job. Uh, right now, we got on the B side, we got Patrick Nix versus Zach Zagger. Uh, Patrick is the owner and operator of Evo Sports. Uh, and Evo Sports is the future. Uh, I'm nothing but impressed with, with this setup. Uh, they, put, they put a camera on tables and you can have commentating you can not have commentating uh but it's 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 so people can tune in and, and watch their live stream matches it's pretty pretty smooth uh at some point in the future i believe that every table in this room will have a have a camera on it and you'll be able to you'll be able to punch in and watch table 14 uh watch your people play uh it is it is a good setup uh we're playing eight ball today uh, BCA rules, although this is an APA event, it's BCA rules. Uh, I'm not sure of the logic behind that, but I'm definitely a fan. Uh, APA rules have some restrictions with jump cues and with other things. Uh, and, and that's probably why, but uh, it is an APA event. Uh, BCA rules for this open. All right, we got Patrick Nix breaking. He's breaking from off the rail. I've been breaking from center. Typically, okay, but he's going second ball break, which I like. Uh, Stan Tarango is using a second ball break right now. Uh, Francisco Bustamante pretty famously uses a second ball break. All right, I don't think anything went down on that break. Nope, here comes Zach. And we are at the Chinook Winds Hotel and Casino, if I have not mentioned that. Uh, I was I played in this tournament today. 
uh, and I had a, a, a darn good time. I'm a fan. That's uh, on seven foot diamonds, Aramith balls, Simona's cloth. All right, so Zach's trying to figure out, you know, eight balls a puzzle. It just is. It's a puzzle that you got to figure out with your mind and then physically solve. Uh, that might sound simplistic, but that's pretty much what it comes down to. You got to come up with a plan. And then, unlike a puzzle, you got to have the skill to, to make that plan happen. All right, so Zach's taking stripes. I like that. Uh, his 14 is an issue. The 14's in between the four and the eight ball there on the rail. 15 looks a little tough. 15's down from the nine ball by the spot. Or that, excuse me, the 13 ball, I would say. So the, the 15 is by the 13 and the two ball. 15's sitting tough. He has an opportunity to break out this 14 ball right here. I'm making the nine in the side and putting a bunch of left on it. Uh, I'm not saying that's what he should do, but. Uh, Beautiful shot. That's one. Bang the eight ball into that ball. That was a good strategy. Can't quite tell if he has a shot at the 13, but I do not believe so. All right. Yeah, he's taking the 14 bottom left hand corner. Probably sliding over and trying to move that 15 ball into a. A better position would be my guess, but we'll see. Yep, yep, that was the move. I like it. Uh, he had an unfortunate roll there. The 13 got right under the three ball, so that 13 sent him tough. Yeah, he's, he's setting up. I like the shot, too. You might as well. He's cutting that 10 in thin and banging into eh, the three ball, maybe in between the three and the 13. In a perfect world, he bangs into just the three ball, leaves the 13 sitting right where it is, and he's got a shot at it. Problem with hitting both of them is that 13 is going to fly, especially with as thin as he's hitting it. Uh, but we'll see. I definitely agree with taking it now. Yeah, see, that worked out perfect. He, he, he's knocked into just the three ball, left his object ball. Also, sitting like clear. Uh, in eight ball, anytime you start moving balls around, it's dangerous. Uh, you're you're kind of rolling the dice. You're better off not moving any balls if you can help it, and certainly not moving your balls. Uh, so that was a great shot by Zach. Now the eight ball is sitting kind of ugly. Uh, bottom of the middle, middle of the bottom rail, basically right on the on the point on the dot. And not a lot of great options for getting on the 15 ball either. We'll see if he figures out something here. That was a good shot. Yeah, okay. So he's trying to make the 15 come up there for the 10 ball on the side and then slide that cue ball down uh, for shape on the 8 ball. Uh, possibly even just, just sliding that cue ball down just a little bit might even work too. I think you're this one. All right. All right. Hello. Trevor Sickendick here. Jumping in and seeing what's happening. What's up, Trevor? Trevor, how are you doing in this tournament? Oh, not playing. Just been working. Okay. Okay. A couple of good buddies of mine here. Just Commentating. What kind of work you been doing here, Trevor? Uh, working with Biggle Box. The nice. Booth. Oh, that's right. That's where I saw you earlier. That's where I saw you earlier. Yeah, this is their tournament. I was talking about what a great job Carissa does and Steve with, with running this. Uh, I don't know how many they've had in a row, but, boy, they have this twice a year, and they've been having it for a long time. Yeah. This was the very first uh, tournament I ever traveled out for there. Oh, that's cool. The APA, so. Nice, nice. You coming, up for, you coming here from Washington, is that right? Uh, Medford, Oregon. Medford, that's right. Rackham. That's yeah. Rackham country, right? Rackham that's cool. All in Medford is Rackham. All right, what do you think about this? Is he gonna he's gonna slice that on the side, maybe hit the one ball with the cue ball for shape on the eight? Yeah, he wants to definitely hit that real good to get it there that way. Ooh, two ball might. Ooh. Oh that could have gone better. 
That definitely could have gone better. I, I think had a chance uh, to. I think uh, the Venom guy, the trick shot guy, he jumps the shot all day. But for the rest of us, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, so I would be torn here. Do I hit the six and marry it to the eight ball? I probably don't, although typically I like that shot. But the six doesn't really go right now, but the eight does. I probably wouldn't do that, but I'd think about marrying the six to the eight ball. Um, from there, I would put the five onto the four ball. Slow roll that five ball to the four so that he can't make it. Yeah, that was – it was kind of sitting like that before he touched it is my problem with that shot. Uh, he might as well have put the five ball on the four. Yeah, like, cause another problem. I like the five on the four, so you're not complicating your eight in case you do get a chance. Right. All right, Patrick, got a shot at running out here. Um, and if you play this right, you know, I teach my son how to play on it in situations like this. It, make sure that if you can, any shot you take is if you miss it, they don't have a shot on the eight ball. Uh, that eight's sitting kind of ugly, so in a perfect world, you know, you, you set it up to where any miss is not going to leave them, certainly not going to leave them an easy straight-in shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm uh, actually, like, playing up table and getting on that three ball. At the I, me too. There. Me too. Ooh. Trevor and I do not like that shot. <laughs> it's yes. and, uh, we're not. Yeah, exactly. I was saying that earlier. It's an eight ball, boy. Moving balls is so dangerous. I'm with you. I want to get on that three ball as soon as possible. Nice thing about doing it now is, again, you won't leave your opponent a shot. I'll we'll pop this and get back to the table. All right, that's what his own plan. The one in the four has gotten dangerous. I would definitely try and take that one ball. He comes up on the wrong angle on that combo, and then you got nothing. You know, whereas right now, it's no shot. Yeah, the way he's not just jumping right on it makes me think too that it doesn't just roll up table for the three. It's probably pretty straight or maybe cutting into the four a little bit. Yeah. I do still like Pat's odds of getting out. I played Pat earlier. He plays real good. And I don't want to – I'm sure neither one of us want to sound like he's not going to get out. I my, my money's on Pat right nice. now. It's just his pattern could have been better. Yeah. Pat and I were actually talking just before he played his match. He was – watching over a last match and just kind of analyzing it, saying that he made things a little bit more difficult than he would like it to be. He was still getting out and making some good shots, yep. but just kind of analyzing his own play and choice making. Because when you're down there on the table, you just kind of see a pattern that may be in your mind, and then things get funny, and you kind of try and force things that are still there. Still I could agree more with that. I played a match two weeks ago. I've been watching the stream of it, uh, and I did well in the tournament, and I'm real proud of how I did, and I'm watching the matches thinking, oh, I did. I did so many things wrong. I did. I made so many poor choices. I missed so many shots that were very makeable shots. Uh, yeah, I thought I did great. Ended up kind of disappointed in my performance. It is important yeah. to watch those those matches so that later you can realize, oh, there was so there were three better safeties than the one I took. Why did I do that? Yeah. All right. Anyway, coming up left side of the seven. No. Okay. This is a nice played speed here. Yeah, Got that's a brave perfect. shot, and he hit it perfect, didn't he? Uh, what I like about commentating for Evo Sports is I don't have to do the score. I am famous for getting the score wrong, especially it depends on the game, but seriously, I get the score wrong a lot. Yeah. It's 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 the worst thing I am about commentating, so I like Evo Sports. Yeah. Uh, my son was asking me, how do they do the live scoring? How does that even work? Uh, yeah, and the, the players do it. Yeah, it's uh, just a tablet there on the table. Just, like, tap on it. Score goes up, live scoring. Uh, updates it right as you go, makes it real easy. And like we were just talking about, being able to go back and rewatch your matches. Here. That's it, a big deal. It is a big That's deal. It's a big you deal. Learn a lot yeah. about yourself and your game. Yeah. And yeah. You can watch how you address the table, if you miss a shot or come up short, if you do yeah. accelerate it, all those little things. Yeah. It's a great learning yeah. tool. Yeah. And the highlight reel when you hit those. Oh, right, those exactly. The lines. highlight reel side is, is cool too. Yeah. You could screen record those shots and put it on Facebook. Yeah. Show everybody how amazing you are. Uh, I'm bringing on pre-shot routine. This is a time where I can really analyze my pre-shot routine. Is it as good as I want it to be? What you know? How's it going? It's often not as good as I want it to be. Yeah, agreed. I also like to analyze my own rhythm when I'm watching. The yeah, because yeah. Sometimes we get into a an easy pattern, and sometimes our rhythm will pick up. We might get ourselves a little funny. Yeah, we then it spend the due time that we normally do, and we make ourselves unknowingly uncomfortable. I, I could not agree more. I could not agree more, Trevor. Sometimes I ask myself, watching myself on the stream, was I in a hurry? 
Right. Were, we, were they timing me? What right. was I doing? Yeah. Is there, there's a shot clock apparently? Yeah. Yeah. What, am, what am I doing? Yeah. I don't hear any beeping there. Why yeah. was I going What so was bad? I? Why am I briskly walking around the table? <laughs> right. Yeah, and that has to have an effect on your play. It just has to, you know? Yeah, you don't want a slow play, but you want to find that right you rhythm. Wanna, yeah, you, you know, if you look like you're, if you're watching yourself and you look like you're in a hurry, that's probably not good. Unless you're Brett Baker. So yeah. When he's in, when he's in stroke, when yeah. he's moving quick, man, yeah. it is a sight. To Watch out, so. huh? Yeah. Yeah, I remember hearing him in a stream. He said that uh, he started doing that to combat his nerves. He yeah. said that if he spent a little bit too much time overthinking things, he got nervous and kind of had a hard time. So he picked up his rate of play and just kind of stuck with it. You know, I always suspected that that's why Rafael Martinez played so fast. It's because you couldn't get nervous when you play super fast. It just is what it is. You know what I mean? You're playing by instinct. What's there something to be said for that? Uh, by the way, I like Zach's shirt. He's got on the bad boy shirt. Those are my people. Jerry All right, yeah, he's, this is tough. You know, you hate to jack up and pop this twelve ball because you get a your accuracy goes off a little bit. But he kind of needs to. Yeah. Let's see how he ends that, up. That fourteen plays up table. It lends to a pretty nice pattern to get on that fifteen ball. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, and that looks like what he was trying to do, Trevor. Yeah, no, and you're right. There's a nice little gap between the one and the and the fifteen ball, probably. Yeah, nice little gap for or no, not fifteen. I guess eleven, maybe. Hard to say. Now these are dicey little shots that you kind of shoot to a blind pocket with the ball maybe hindering a little bit. Hard to be comfortable. Yep. Cue ball is going to kind of want to get a little bit away from you because you don't want to slow roll it. Yeah. Get up close to that. Nine ball. Oh, nice shot. My last tournament was on a nine foot, and I can't have, tell you how thankful I am to be playing on seven foots right now. Seriously, everything was so hard on the nine foot. Jeez. Yeah, the seven foot, it's nice just to have a little break and be like, I think I'm going to make this shot. My odds are way better right now. All right. Back taking the nine. The 13 is a little bit of a problem. He can follow that nine ball for straight for to, to leave himself a 13 in the top right. Corner pocket. We'll see what ends up doing. I wonder if that 13 can squeeze by the camera angles can be deceiving. Yeah. Maybe he has enough of it that he can see by that five ball if he gets on it right. But yeah, he may be playing on a breakout right here too, with some top right on that 10 ball break, moving the five out of his way. We'll see. It's getting an eight ball. The less soldiers you have, the more dangerous it gets. It's getting a little dangerous right now. You know what I mean? He's getting on these last few balls. Eight goes in the side. That's always that is correct. the thing I'm looking at the most. That's the nightmare. Does the eight go? Am I doing all this for nothing? Just so I can be frustrated here in a minute. So that eight goes. So Okay. Now that shot makes me think that that 13 goes, like you were saying, camera angle-wise. Uh, he's, he's sitting all right. He's got Pat a little stymied with that five ball. Uh, now, I do think Pat might be lucky. You think that four ball goes from where he's sitting? Yeah, that would be see. convenient. That would definitely be very convenient because that would really open up a lot of those congestion down there for him. Patrick with his Evo Sports shirt on. I like it. All right. I think he's playing a containment safe here. Is it played? The one negative is that six is now. Not a great ball. The winning team, please stay up at the table. And the other team, please come up to the tournament desk for your prize. You played very well tonight. You got this far. You get uh, did you work back. with Biggle Box uh, during Western BCA Tour or just APA? Yeah, I've been working with them since last November APA. So we did Worlds just here recently down in Vegas. And then we did the BCA here the week before APA. And I'm going to say we did it. 18 days. Oh, that's I'm glad to hear that, man. They need good help and they deserve good help. So that's that's great. I'm actually really quite really happy to hear that. They have made that business happen. Yeah, right. Uh, that was a great hit. That was an important hit. Yeah, and Patrick a little bit. Patrick still has a problem with the six ball, he's still got a problem with the five ball. This is an interesting game, A ball right here. Again, they've gone to four. And yeah, so every, I mentioned going to four because every shot counts in a, in a short race like this, you know? Uh, 
God forbid you lose this game, you're down 2-0, and then the guy breaks and runs on you. It's three, because that's the thing is, eight ball can be a slow grind of a game, or sometimes you break and you feel like any idiot can run them out, you know? I mean, so you got to be really careful on a game like this. I started you off with a wonderful rack, and you have done this to me. They've been having the, oh, the pool gods, the the pool tournament of the gods here. Uh, I've seen it before. I'll tell you, I put a post on, on my Facebook. Uh, you can say whatever you want. APA players have fun. They are here having a good time, man. Yeah. I'm a Western BCA guy myself, but I got to say, they make us look a little uptight. Who's going to break? Who's going to break? I mean, one. All right, Pat's studying the table. Uh, Pat's got a great setup at his house where he does live stream. Uh, I'm blanking on the name of that now. It's Chalkbox Productions. Chalkbox Productions. That's right. I've been lucky enough to play there a few times. I got to play Ed Hops and one pocket there. I uh, did some other match there. I don't remember, but yeah, I sure like what he's got going on there. He married him on that three where he can't see. I think it's a eleven ball out of there. It's a very nice place. Yeah, I think he can only shoot off into space from sitting there, right? I don't think he can. He's going to have to go rail first. I think Zach's going to have to go rail first to hit something. We'll see. Maybe it's maybe it's deceiving this camera angle, but I think he's got to go to the top rail and back up and just hit a ball. Going down into the stay down below all the problems. Yep. No, that's a great point. What's your next big tournament? You got anything planned? Yeah, next week I'm going to be up in uh, Auburn, 625 and below. I'm going to get to Virginia. Sweet, sweet. That's cool, man. I was fortunate enough to go to the Florida last week in Virginia. I was going to go to the atmosphere of the room, as I'm sure you're now aware, going down there and play, man, it is. It is something to be holding. I like those tournaments. Now, obviously, I had some luck, so, of course, I'm sitting to where I like them. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I got a steak horse to put me into that, so it wasn't the full 1,000 I had to worry about. Uh, I did do the side pots myself. But, yeah, the payouts on those tournaments, nice shot, is amazing. Yeah, something to be said for those. Everybody's upset with there, especially if that 13 ball goes. Yeah, and he definitely called it because Pat's still sitting. Oh, yeah, I can see from here that 13 is uh, not likely to be able to squeeze it out unless you're really throwing it. Yeah. He kind of has to fly at it. Or maybe not now, but I mean, I've heard that before. some point or another. You can get good on this 11 to break it out and actually still then to... Oh. Some to do. Oh, oh that's too bad because that was a great shot, Zach. Zach, when you're watching this later, that was a great shot, man. That rolled two inches too far. Yeah, you came in between the four and the three really nicely. A good line, that's yeah, sure. that was a good shot. All right, this is where I'm screaming for a ref. <laughs> yeah, unless he plays the bank. They're definitely talking out ref, so. Yeah. Now, I got to say, it looks like uh, he's got a shot at it. Yeah, I think he's he's got a legit shot at this. So I don't think they had anybody watch that, and they just they're just going for it. Uh, there's no refs here, uh, but there is. It, honestly, sometimes the refs are overrated. There's a million people in this room that could watch that hit for you that are basically qualified to call it. So. Yeah, they're figuring that was legal. I'm definitely staying out of it. Look, look fine to me if it's fine to them. Yeah, this is tough. I would. I see him using left. I would be using the right to go into the rail. I'm just saying. Trust me. Right handing. Yeah, so he's going around like that. There's no that's a payoff. Okay. Well, that's up. Yeah, I think uh, I fought. So I don't like the six ball. 
So I'm trying to follow that three and leave myself a stop shot on the two ball so I can leave them, so I can leave the cue ball right behind the four ball, call it safe. Uh, and then when I get ball in hand, trying to deal with that six ball. But I am, a, I would be what considered, what would be considered a wuss when it comes to playing pool. Like, I don't like going for it. I don't want the breakout. I, I don't want the breakout. I want safe and ball in hand. Some might call it a wuss or a high percentage player. However, yeah, you know, you know what I'm you saying, like though. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just, you know. The yeah, so that. he's he's going for it. He's going for the breakout, I believe. Yeah, both the four and the two both go clean. That definitely leads to a lot of accessibility in this app. Ooh. Well, he might get straight on the two and be able to play a shot you just mentioned. So. Yes, I would say two things. One, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He tried the breakout. He almost scratched it. Ugh. Second, though, yeah, now he's set up perfect for the stop shot safety, uh, and I would definitely be playing that. I played a safe earlier today, and I made the ball, and I didn't call safe, and, you know, it looked like I was trying for it, and I just kept shooting because I thought it, I was screwed, so it would have been to his advantage to have me continue shooting anyway. It wasn't like I was cheating, but I realized, oh, I should have called safe. I got to start calling safe. This is a shot. My point would be, Call safe because if that two goes goes somehow, you don't want to shoot again. Yeah. I think that's one of the things diamonds have brought to the to the world though is uh, kick shots are more legit these days because every table kicks the exact same the rails are the good you know uh and i think your average player has gotten a lot better at kicking balls in and yeah i agree to your point now by the way pat watching this later that was a great save man that was good i would have done under the four ball but still that was a great save um and yeah we'll see he's got a one round kick at this yeah he was probably feeling that he could maybe get underneath of that six and take away this one. Take away the one one rail. Uh, oh. Now that is a loss. Uh, you can make the eight and not scratch, and the eight ball just spots up, but if you scratch and make the eight, it is a loss. Nice kick with a little unfortunate roll. So Pat up two and a race to four. Pat's break, it looks like. Again, Pat is the owner and operator of Evo Sports, which I do legitimately believe is the future. I think there will be a time at this tournament where there's 20 tables that have cameras, and then I believe there'll be a time when every single one of these tables has a camera, and you can tune into a website because your buddy told you he was on table 19, and you can watch table 19, and that is the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, people can bring their phones out with tripods, but the angle on this, the quality, being able to have the live scoring, being able to commentate on it, like all those features are just really, really slick, really clever. Yep, and I'm a guy that I have the tripod, I have the whole setup. It is one more thing to mess with. Okay. You're stressing out on a match, you're hoping you don't dog it, you got all this stuff going through your mind, and now you're the tripod guy too, you know right. what I mean? You're worried about your battery, you got to keep checking it, and like recording. Uh, Copyright. Oh, my you know, God, the music. Yes, things. exactly, yeah. man. Yeah, it's not. It ain't all it's cracked up. I got the tripod and thought, this is going to be great. And honestly, it's a thing, man. Uh, you know, uh, watching I was around Savannah Easton uh, a couple weeks ago and realized, yeah, you know, she's got her. Uh, my point would be they li she live streams all her matches. She's got her parents there, two full-grown adults and a computer, and they handle the whole thing. You know what I mean? She doesn't have to worry about it. She just plays. That's, that is not that my parents aren't here. Yeah. I don't have a team. All right. Second ball break from Pat. Again, I respect that. Stan right now is breaking with a second ball break. He doesn't always, but Stan Triangle, I'm talking about. Uh, Bustamante definitely has a great second ball break. Corey Dual pulls it out sometimes. And that's a great, great way of doing it. That cue ball went to the rail and then back into the rack. That's pretty legit. We make a ball three, six, nine, ten, up. We made at least one, maybe two. That was my quick count. I think we made the seven ball in the bottom right. 
What do you like here? Really quickly look, and I think I like stripes, but that's if the 12 goes past the 5 there on the bottom right-hand corner. No. Um, 15 ball there in the 8 ball there spot is definitely one to... The 1 is not my favorite, um, but I do believe the 1 goes to both top and right and left, top, left and right corner pockets. Yeah, I think both. I think all the balls look pretty good. I guess the one I don't like is the stripe over there by the five ball. So I guess I'm a solids guy. Oh, he does not want to hit the three ball coming back up. Good shot. That was important to get above the three ball was kind of the whole out. All right. Now, of course, with that being said, he's got to figure out that one ball. That one ball is his. I hate to say problem ball, but you know, there's there's always a worst ball on the back table. Back. I would say the I one ball is his worst is ball. Um, if you hear you talking in the background, that is uh, the pool tournament yes. of the gods here, and uh, he yells out uh, uh, instructions, comes up with crazy rules, and he's he's talking to all the tables at once. So he's he's kind of a loud talker when he does this. <laughs> I'm trying to get a job, Robert. <laughs> People are giving me a hard time for commentating. I'm trying to work, man. Right. Anything that might get me paid someday, I'll try it. Here we go. I'm a big fan of the Evo Sports, and I really like Pat. I've, like I said, I've played Chalkbox. He asked me to commentate. I pretty much do anything for Pat. He's doing a lot for the, the community, too, the, the Pacific Northwest community. I'm also a fan. Anytime anybody does anything for the Pacific Northwest pool community, uh, which which he does, so I, I'm always willing to support when it comes to that stuff too. Yeah, he definitely has a huge love for the game and tries to promote it in any way he can. Yeah, yeah. As somebody who's traveled a bit, uh, we have a reputation. People know Oregon and Washington play strong, uh, and we do. And it's because of guys like Patrick Nix with that and what he does. I would have maybe done that harder for the five ball shot. Do you think he left himself on the five? I think he did. He can get up table. Physically, it looks like he did. The way, Where he's standing looks like he, he likes the five ball. So I'm going to assume it's makeable. Trying to trying to see things on the camera sometimes is a little tough. Yeah. I'm almost on the line where I can see it from here. But If you're a pool player, you know you're talking about quarter inches here. Oh, yeah. So on a camera, quarter inch is hard to tell. And a quarter inch is a, is a is a lot when it comes to pool. Actually, all right, that. Yeah, you almost have to slow. Yeah, but this reminds me of some of the racks that I played today in this tournament, where they seemed to be okay right until they were not okay, and I would say this took this just just took a little bit of a left turn. Yeah. There you go. Max, I think you got to play this at a very. Touchy speed to come into the left hand side of that ball. I almost think you need side. to take the four ball first and come left left long rail and then come over to the right hand side. This is where I've always admired Steve Lingelbach. Uh, Steve Lingelbach will stare at this table until he comes up with a solution and then he'll do the smartest thing and it often works out. Where I feel like I look at the table and I do, I do something silly. All right, I think he should be taking the four ball. I think the four ball brings a natural shape to the one. Ooh, what do I know? That was pretty good. I know he's off angle, but the idea of going off the nine ball for shape was pretty strong. It's a tough shot on the diamond because if you if you hit the left side of the pocket, hit the point first, it ain't a going. These are not valleys. They're not Brunswick's. Uh, yeah, and on yeah. these blind... Back cuts like this, yep. our tendency is to yeah. aim for the back of the pocket. Oh, right, right. Here. I like. I'm a big fan of Tor Tor Lowry on there YouTube, you and he's a guy that'll talk about that a lot. Of saying, your mind tells you to aim for the back of the pocket, not the not not where the pocket actually is. And no, you're. I completely agree with what he just said. I always think of it as the catcher's mitt. The catcher's mitt is on the the right hand side of this pocket, not the left. I remember a game changer for me is being told to aim right where the curvature of the pocket meets the rail. Okay. Get that visual. Oh my goodness! What a shot! I wonder if he's got a line on that. That was strong, man. 
I think he's got – I want him to have shape just because that was such a great shot, but I actually do think he's got shape. Yeah, he's waiting for the guy behind his him because he doesn't language. want to shark him. Yeah, his body language is dressing it up like he's got the line on it. That 100%. Was, 100%. Patrick, that was, that was strong. That was man. a highlight reel for shot real. there for sure. And that puts him at 3-0 on the hill, too. Right, that was a big shot. Big, big shot. shot. It's a both right. players having a smile. Right. No, it's the nice part about these tournaments, too, is we all know each other. We've all been playing each other for years, right. you know. Uh, yeah, people. Oh, Jeremy Jones uh, uh, commentated the Northwest Cup, and he was truly surprised at how, how much the Washington players and the Oregon players truly like each other. And he, he mentioned, you know, if we did this between Texas and Oklahoma, it ain't like this. We do not care for each other. We legitimately do not care for each other. But here, you know, it's we're all Pacific Northwest. It's just across the bridge. It's just everybody's. We're just not like that. I, we all really like each other for the most part. It's it's Pacific Northwest pool, man. These guys know each other. Yeah, it's friendly competition. It's serious competition, but it's, you know. Yeah. All right, again, we'll see if Zach's doing second ball break here. I practiced my second ball break before I came down here. I don't think that was quite a second ball break. It seemed like you kind of clipped that head ball maybe. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, but I got a pretty good, I got a pretty strong break, and I feel like I'm giving up a little bit of my advantage by doing a second ball break. So I would do a head ball break. But, boy, I've been focused on, Getting the center of the head ball and bouncing straight back instead of bouncing towards the side pockets and get kicked in. Because one of the worst things you can do playing eight ball is scratch off the break, especially if it's a break like this, because you're basically giving away a game. I mean, once you're past a, a certain Fargo, a 500 Fargo, something like that, ball in hand with an open table. No problem. Yeah. All right, so that was a great break by Zach. He's got some thinking to do. And and the pressure's on here, too, is the other side of that. You do not want to miss. Yeah. Pat's on the hill. Pat's playing good. He's feeling good. Yeah, you, you can't afford to dog anything right now. One thought that I always have in this situation when I'm down is, like, I want to have an answer to that break and run. I want to play a very controlled out. I want to put him back on his heels that I can handle this pressure and tell him, like, you gotta you got to earn this. I'm not going to lay down. So, like, yeah. You know, that's six ball, isn't it? No, I agree 100%. A little, little meticulous here and try and play real tight. Yeah. So try and find that pattern. That is exactly where it should be. Kind of like in stripes, oddly enough, here. but And he's got a shot at the 15, right? If he wanted to do stripes. Or whatever ball is over by the side pocket right now. Yeah, there's some people sitting in front of the table. I can't look over there and see. Uh -huh. We have a winner to the Pool of the Gods tournament. <laughs> they are dressed up like uh, like uh, mythical gods. Like uh, oh, my wife would be able to tell you. They got togas on. Oh yeah, they're definitely having some fun. All right, he's, he's taking your advice, taking stripes. Yeah, and I like that. His only issue now is he's got to get on real specific shape on that nine ball. Agreed. The reason I like the stripes is it kind of clears the center table, gives you more options on the eight ball. Yeah. But you've got to definitely play a pretty concise out here. I'm going to land two straight. I think he's got some angle there. But it's one of those kind of kind of have to punch this ball in to get into that two ball to be on the safe side of things. But may look to draw out. Yeah, he's gonna take this. Take some bravery on this shot. That was a good shot. Nice. Again, this is Evo Sports. Uh, the future pool. Believe it. Two thousand twenty-four. Enough wins open. Brought to you by Boogle Box. And they do a damn good job. I wonder if the line wins to be able to throw and just miss that one ball and play into the five without I'd like to play this shot. Yeah. 
Just getting a little update on how a tournament's coming out in the morning, but yeah, Zach's in some trouble here. He, yeah, he, he is. I'm sorry to say. He was just contemplating the jump at the stripe in the side. Uh, now he's checking out that nine ball. I hate to recommend a jump, um, but I'm not sure what the plan is here. I'm jumping pretty good these days, and my draw on the jump is, is pretty good. It, that's one thing I like about the jump is with draw, he, he can have shape on the nine. Okay. Yeah. Kind of having to give up the table here and hope to get another opportunity. I like what he just did in some ways. One of the problems is he put that nine ball in my least favorite position of any ball uh, in pool. I hate it when my object ball is sitting there. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, so Pat's got a shot and he also has some air here a little bit. I'm trying to look if there's a safety I would play. I think I might have to take the five ball all the way down, bottom left. I wonder if you can see that seven to kind of shoot it like you were cross banking it, but just slow it. Yeah, no, for a safety. No, I, I like that. But being up, the kind of tendency is, is to try and go for the out. Especially after that last. There's nothing wrong with this Listen, weekend. that worked pretty good there, Pat. Yeah, and had he made that, he's sitting good. Had he missed it, that was pretty smart. I like that shot. Patrick Nix. With the big brain shot, as my daughter would say. <laughs> All right, he's back to the jump shot, right? I mean, either that or man, is he thinking about banking the nine and playing the combo? God, I, I wonder what he's looking at. Is the, oh, I see what we're saying. Back, back up. Oh, he's just slow going up onto the top rail. I'm trying to get under that three ball. He didn't quite get there, but that's a I, that makes sense in a lot of ways. Had he nailed that that cue ball to the rail there, the top rail, and used the nine to cover up on the five. That yep. was a yep. weapon. Yep. Makes sense. For this shot. For this shot. All right. So Pat it. looks like he's he's taking that three ball. And he's going to put the nail in the coffin. Need to get in a good line here. And... Nicely played. Very nice. He just opened the table up for himself a little bit there. There's about six ways to get out right now. Yeah. I'm not sure if any of them are wrong. Yeah, I'd be looking to clear the seven in the controlled way as soon as possible just to free up that one ball. I was just going to say the one ball is, like I was saying earlier, you know, you hate to say it's a problem ball, but it's his least good ball. Yeah, yeah the one ball is the one I'd be worrying about because you got to worry about something. The four ball also lends to be in the awkward. Yeah, I agree. To... I think I might take the four with top right now and bring it, Back up through the gap between the eight and the nine ball, leaving myself the two or the five. Yeah. Because I don't think he's straight enough to get over on the seven. Drawn here is dangerous. Yeah, boy, he could be right up right behind that nine ball. Not that speed. That's the dump. Nice shot, Pat. His rhythm right now is not playing tentative at all. He's picking a shot and no, executing. I agree. I agree. Okay, seven ball now. Seven ball makes sure that the one's okay. We're, and it was slow. You can take the one up top. That was not slow. Okay. That could have gone better, Trevor. Yes, indeed. Uh, one in the side? 
think that's what he's looking at now. If it's available, if not, I just like just kind of nudge him into the five, kicking it off of the rail. And, Which he did know. earlier in a safety. He did a, a shot similar to that. Stop, yeah, he may uh, he may do that. But if the one's available, I know being up here at 3 0, you're just looking to stay on the offense. I like side pocket yeah. shots. I'm pretty comfortable with them. Personally, I would take that front. I, what I'm afraid is when I nudge that five ball, is I dog it. And somehow I leave him straight in on the nine and yeah. kick myself. That's For me, that's why I go for the one ball right now. When I'm nervous, I can I can hit that wrong or not hit a rail too. I do that sometimes. I hit it so soft that I don't even get a rail. And then I want to. I'm, that I'm not happy with myself. Let's just say that. All right. Did he leave him the stripe? And is that an automatic strike, scratch shot, or can he avoid the scratch? All right. He's taking it to the top right hand corner pocket. Again, I would worry is this an automatic scratch? It's a pleasure ball. If you can see the full ball, you might play the bank, get up onto the top rail there. Yeah. And then if it goes. You got the nine right there available. But you got to be able to see enough of that ball to get to the left hand side of it for that thing. Now he just tapped the side pocket. I don't know if that's because it's a lucky thing to do or if he means he's, he's trying to cut this on the side. Very loudly. If I don't hear it loud enough, I don't know. Zach keeps looking over at us. Makes me wish we were in some sort of a shrouded area or something, you know. It can be yeah. being on the stream is pressure. It is. It is another yeah, form of pressure. It really, really is. Yeah. Because you, you can be thinking about rich. are they critiquing what I'm doing? Are they liking what I'm doing? Pressure goes on in the set. Yeah. I have shared live streams. I know he was asking how to share this. I've shared live streams. And then later thought, why did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> why am I trying to make sure there's as many people that know me watching this as possible? Yeah. All right, so he called the bank, top left-hand corner pocket. I think that's a good shot as far as... Oh, nice. That's a highlight reel shot right there. Well done. Nine squeezes. His body language is semen. One and a half men and chalk dirty. Chalk dirty. One and a half men. Side pocket drawn into that first diamond on the bottom right. Yeah, or he's following it down to the bottom rail and trying to get on the right-hand side of the one ball for shape on the eight and the side pocket on the left. We'll see see how it ends up. I don't think you can avoid the two there, can you? Just following it? I, I think so, but it's hard for me to say, right? Oh, man. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, is, you know, Easy shots are easy to miss sometimes. It's unfortunate, but, you know, we've got so much on your mind. He may have been thinking about not running into that two on the cheap yeah. pocket a little bit. I The first time I played teams down here in, in Chinook Winds, one of my best friends in the world, Paul Marquez, I kept missing. I kept missing. I couldn't. I just kept missing. And he finally pulled me aside and said, hey, man, you got to pocket the ball. <laughs> Shape is cool, but first and foremost, you got to pocket the ball. And I still tell myself that sometimes where I'm like, dude, just pocket the ball. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, yeah, shape's good to try for. But first and foremost, pocket the ball, man. Because, yeah, when you don't pocket the ball, you leave your opponent. I mean, it's just obvious. You leave your opponent in. You were paying no defense at all when you were when you were completely making, trying to make the ball, you know. And yeah, you have got to pocket the ball first and foremost, which sounds so simple. But, man. Oh, yeah. Whenever I'm running into another ball close to my object ball, I found that I missed that ball a lot because my eye was flicking over to where I was going to contact the other one, and I would cost myself lots of games. That yep, way. yep. Zach, you were almost there, buddy. And Pat, you are looking good, my friend. Yeah, Zach with that big big bank. Yeah, that was a huge bank, man. Good idea. Just kind of a stop shot with a little, with a little roll to the left. That was beautiful. Uh, I'm sorry to say I've missed this shot about nine thousand times. Agreed. I like uh, it, especially when I'm on the hill thinking about how great it's going to win. I'm going to get bacon on my cheeseburger. I think right. I'll get a large Pepsi. Rattle. Yeah, I like Patrick's uh, rhythm here. He's, he's not okay, moving too quickly. He's really taking it. Very nicely done. 
Well hey, nice commentating with you. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I don't know how to turn this off, so it's on you or Pat. All right. I don't know how to turn it off either. Maybe they'll hit the end thing and it turns off. But thanks for tuning in, and you guys have a good night. Hey, great match, Pat. Great match, Zach. Likewise.